All right, we want to get to some new developments. About an hour ago, a federal judge released more than 1,800 pages of documents filed by special counsel Jack Smith in the 2020 election interference case. It includes new details about former President Donald Trump's actions leading up to the January 6th assault on the Capitol. So I want to bring in CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane right now. I know there are a lot of pages to go through, more than 1,800 pages that have been unsealed, but what are we learning about what has been unsealed right now? Oh, this is the legal equivalent of somebody putting Tolstoy's War and Peace in front of you <laughs> over lunch and saying, oh enjoy this while you have your sandwich. 1,900 pages of legal documents is quite a Herculean challenge to get through. What is making this somewhat simpler is the majority of the pages, an overwhelming majority of those pages, remain sealed. They are blocked out from public view. They've been sealed by the court, potentially including information that should not yet be in the public view. So what's remaining? An awful lot of interviews with key witnesses and that House January 6th Select Committee. Remember that? They investigated January 6th. Some of the components of those interviews are going to try to buttress the special counsel's argument that not only did Donald Trump commit a crime, but that what he did in allegedly trying to overturn the 2020 election, conspiring to do so, was private action, not official action, that he did so as a citizen or as a candidate, not as the president of the United States, which is critical and weight bearing in this case, because on July 1st, the Supreme Court gave Trump some amount of presidential immunity for official acts. We've seen in these documents the actual envelopes used to mail those electoral certificates to Washington, D.C. from the states Trump was challenging. We've seen some of the memos that were being exchanged by Trump allies, descriptions of some of the conversations undertaken by Trump and his allies before January 6th as Jack Smith tries to make this case that not only did Donald Trump conspire to overturn an election, but that he did so not as president, but as a candidate. Yes, yeah, Scott, let's talk about the timing of all of this. I know that the judge also really pushed back on Trump's arguments that unveiling the evidence should actually be delayed until after the election. So walk us through the timing of this and the ruling. You know, Trump's team tried hard to get this thing pushed back, this last batch of records likely to be released before the election. Trump's team tried to get this thing pushed until about a week after the election. The judge in this case, Washington, D.C., Judge Tanya Chutkin, rejected that argument and made an indication in her ruling that to hold back this information and criminal case information before an election would itself be a form of election interference. So she has allowed this to be unsealed on the public docket. Some of these things we knew already. They're from public facing things. They actually have dozens and dozens of pages of Trump's January 6th and pre-January 6th tweets. We've seen them before. A couple anecdotes we didn't know already. For example, there's a White House aide who's quoted in these records saying when he alerted Trump to rioting going on at the Capitol as he returned into the White House January 6th, he then went to fetch Donald Trump a Diet Coke as the TV watching was to begin. These are things Trump might not want coming out 18 days before an election, reminding America of January 6th, the horrors and the history. But it has landed on the public docket on this Friday. Scott McFarland. Scott, thank you so much.